Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how to win photography competitions, or at least how to give yourself the best chances based on um, our own photography competitions that we run. Now, we get a lot of questions come in from people that enter our competitions, uh, all sorts of different questions, some of which I'm going to go through now. We don't actually uh, respond uh, really to these questions because as the judges of the competition we're not really uh, able to enter into a discussion with any entrance because that really wouldn't be fair. But uh, let, me, let me just explain a little bit about the process. So here on uh, carltaylereducation.com uh, we have a competitions page which is accessed through the uh, My Account login and if we go to that page you can see that our next competition which is the December 2018 competition. That one is the theme is red and the prize is an EOS, Canon EOS 5D Mark IV body. So a pretty good prize there. We've given away uh, one of these before. You can also see in our future competitions, we've got like a $700 Manfrotto tripod. We've got uh, a $3,400 Broncolor Cirrus lighting kit there. Then uh, September, we've got whole Lee filters, $500 Lee filters kit. And then next December, uh, probably uh, another Canon 5D Mark IV that we'll be giving away. Now the competition themes, you can see motion for March 2019, beautiful light for June 2019, technology for September 2019, and architecture for December 2019. So four competitions a year, quarterly competitions, plenty of advance warning for people to either look through their back catalog of images or go out and shoot something fresh to uh, submit. And you can submit entries through the uh, submission page. Now, uh, we also have our past competition winners so that you can see the standard of the winners that have won previously. But what I wanna do is uh, point out a couple of tips really for those people entering competitions, not just our competition, but any competition, uh, these rules would be uh, applicable or these guidelines, I, would, I should say, would be applicable. Now, um, I've made a few notes here because what, one of, I don't want to forget anything uh, about this. But the first thing is the topic. So you can see at the moment this theme for December 2018 to win this Canon 5D Mark IV. The topic is red. The uh, previous topics were uh, macro was a previous one, fast was a previous one, travel and culture a previous one, and then the next one in March, motion. Now, one of the important things with a competition is the topic, is the theme. It's in interpreting that theme and coming up with a picture where the narrative of that picture, the story of that picture, or the mood or feeling of that picture represents the theme. Now, sometimes we get people say, well, what does the theme mean? You know, what, you know they, they, for example, uh, fast, for, uh, that was a previous one. Oh, well, does that mean I can put this type of image in or that type of image or that? Well, no, we can't tell you that, okay? We can give sometimes a very vague description in addition to the theme, but as the entrant to the competition, it is your idea, it is your uh, perception of the theme that is important. Um, however, it does seem that we get a lot of people enter that have completely misunderstood the theme or they've just tried to throw in an image that they think might get away with being close to the theme. Now, I wouldn't recommend that, okay, because realistically, we are going to judge the competition strongly based on the topic and the theme. If the image is off topic and it doesn't coincide or have any relatable value to the theme, then it's not going to score well, no matter how good the image is. I mean, if we have a competition and the theme is fast and someone sends in a, an amazing picture of, I don't know, uh, a pair of headphones or some amazing product shot or an amazing beauty shot, and no matter how good that shot is, if it doesn't match the topic or the theme, such as fast in a previous one, then it is not going to get any points, no matter how good the picture is. So that's the first thing to point out. Don't randomly throw pictures in just because they're good 
and you like them uh, if they're not on topic. So let's uh, start by dealing with this problem of um, images being off topic. Let me go into the uh, competition fast, for example, uh, because there's some really good examples in here. Um, we're going to run through some of the entrants uh, that we received for fast that I would consider weren't on topic. So here's one image. Um, it's an interesting image, but it doesn't, it doesn't really say fast by any uh, stretch of the imagination, I'm afraid. Uh, neither does that. I have no idea why that image came in under the theme fast. I have no idea why that image came in under the theme fast. It does seem sometimes that photographers want to send uh, their work in, uh, just hoping that you will like the picture. And as I said, no matter how good the picture is, um, there's no way it's going to get judged under the theme fast. Lovely food shot to some extent here, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the topic at hand. The same uh, with this one, product image, nice product image, nothing to do with the theme fast. This particular image has absolutely nothing to do with the theme fast. It's the complete opposite in that it is a completely still image. Uh, now, maybe paradoxically, someone could read something into that, but I'm afraid as far as our competitions go, uh, that's not the case, and neither with this one, nor this one. Uh, now, this one, one could argue, okay, we have a Ferrari, which is a fast car, but uh, really all we've got here is a Ferrari that looks like it's in a showroom with a beautiful young lady sat in it with quite a busy background. It does not depict the theme fast, okay? So, so those type of images, I'm afraid, are not going to qualify. Let me show you uh, what did qualify uh, and what did win for the uh, theme fast. And um, we can see that in first place, uh, this was the image that won. Let me zoom in on that a little bit for you. So we have the skier doing the ski jump, beautiful twilight. Now we definitely understand the, the, the feeling of fast. The second place winner was this beautiful image of this fighter jet. We can uh, certainly perceive the theme fast, the narrative fits. And then third place, this spinning liquid uh, moving around, we can perceive the theme fast. And all of those three images were also well executed, well composed, well exposed images with good narrative. So that's why they won and why they placed in that theme fast. The next thing we have to look at is the actual judging process in uh, how do we eliminate pictures? How do we decide on the pictures that are going to uh, win. Well, usually what happens out of all of the entries that we receive in, we do a first cull, that's myself and the team, and we'll eliminate things that are poorly composed or poorly exposed or do not fit the topic, and we eliminate all of those straight away. We then uh, segregate the images into sort of categories like what we immediately think are uh, potential winners and then possible winners and then uh, sort of possible next stage. And then we'll review those a few times to get our heads around the images in case we missed anything, double check um, the interpretation of the theme, etc., etc. And then we'll whittle it down to a folder of images and then between the team and I, we'll whittle it down a little bit further and then I'll make the final decision on uh, the final choice. And I normally whittle that down to about six images for the three potential prizes. And then I'll discuss with the team again um, for a little bit of uh, outside input um, uh, on their opinions as well. And then uh, we will arrive at a decision between us. So that's the, the, the judging process. But if we, again, if we have a look at some of the other examples of where um, photographers have gone wrong, let's take a look at the theme for macro, which was uh, obviously a previous competition that we ran. Let me show you uh, some of the odd ones that came in for macro. So the, we have a landscape image that came in under the theme macro. We have a strawberry. Now, now this is a close up image, but it's more of a product food image. It's certainly not macro where it's in really, really close. 
We have a dramatic portrait uh, in, you know, very high uh, contrast uh, lighting with uh, deep shadows everywhere. Nowhere does that come anything to do with macro. That doesn't come anything to do with macro. Uh, that doesn't come anything to do with macro. And yet all of these images, including this picture of Venice, came in as entries on the subject of macro photography. So uh, go figure, I'm afraid, on this because I have no idea. This particular image, uh, possibility on the macro, but it's still really not macro enough and neither is that one. So there you can see uh, the sort of odd uh, entries that we get. Um, if we go into the next category, moments, another great example of some reasons why images will not place well. Um, let's have a look at these. Uh, this will never uh, qualify, I'm afraid, because we ask for a single picture, not a montage of pictures. Now, yes, there are lots of moments happening there, but in my opinion, this is kind of cheating the rules because you're putting lots and lots of photos just as a, as a um, contact sheet. And the rules strictly stated you were allowed to enter one photo at a given size. So I'm afraid that wouldn't qualify. We have no idea how that um, came under the theme of moments. Really, that doesn't either. Neither does that. Uh, that possibly, but uh, it's nicely lit in many ways, but it does look kind of artificial and over photoshopped. And we'll, we'll come on to the subject of Photoshop in a sec in a second. Now, uh, moments, yeah, not really applicable there. And then here is another common problem. This one did actually meet the subject of moments but it came in at a ridiculously low resolution. Um, so, and you can see how pixelated this one as well. Um, the, the entrant, they, they said, we, we allow 2000 pixels wide uh, or on the long edge of our entries. And these ones came in at like 200 pixels. So something uh, really went wrong with the uh, entries uh, perception of the um, sizing requirements as well. Now, one of the other common uh, requirements is the, uh, the one of the other common problems is watermarking. So um, these this came in under the uh, theme of adventure, uh, but it has this horrible, um, massively imposing watermark on the image. Now I'm afraid that completely destroys the photograph, and we see this time and time again where we see these massive big watermarks or big signatures on the image. And I'm afraid as far as judging for competition purposes go, uh, we really aren't going to uh, score highly when we have these very disturbing or imposing watermarks on the image. So, so far we've looked at um, remaining on topic, that's key, not having big imposing watermarks on the image. If you are gonna add a watermark, keep it small, keep it discreet. And then we've got problems with um, actually entering an image that is um, the right size. It clearly says that you can enter it 2000 pixels wide. We have a video on our YouTube channel that shows you how to resize your images. It clearly explains how to do that um, if you're not sure on, on how to resize your images. Um, but you know, it still amazes me that we get these images that are so off topic. So this particular theme is travel and culture. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at some of the problems that occurred with these. So first image, well, it is kind of related to travel and culture, but I, I mean, I must admit, I was wondering whether this was a little bit of a joke with this image in that it came in at uh, a completely tilted skew if angle. The image isn't even sharp. There's some motion blur from a slow shutter speed. And the composition obviously is miles off given the diagonal approach to the image. This image is a painting. Um, it's not even a photograph anymore. So under travel and culture in a photography competition, how can we possibly score an image that is actually a painting. Um, and then we have an image that is a photograph, but again, heavily photoshopped with this heavy vignette 
not really um, going to cut it for us. We want to try to retain at least mostly photographic elements. And if we are going to have Photoshop become part of the, um, part of the process, then um, it's got to be done in a discerning fashion uh, with a little bit of finesse um, in that Photoshop from our perspective shouldn't really impose itself on an image. It should almost go unnoticed. You should not even really be able to perceive it. It just enhances the image. So I'm, I'm not really keen on, on this sort of effect um, used um, as a post-production technique. Um, this is also another problem. This, this one came in and it, it's actually got two images. Um, it's got the travel and culture element on the left, but then we have this lady wearing a scarf as if it was a clothes advert on the right that has nothing to do with the theme. And yet the two images came in joined together. So I'm afraid it was disqualified immediately. So what I'm trying to do here, although it's kind of comical in, in pointing some of these things out, just really trying to make people aware of some of the key things. And if we take the travel and culture uh, winners, so we can see here, uh, the winners. This was the winner, first prize in the travel and culture se section. Perfectly exposed, nicely composed, good narrative, good atmosphere, good lighting, and it's on theme. And he won first prize. Another great one here, uh, Nicholas Logero, great travel and culture Im image here that was uh, captured. And then third place, we really liked this one as well. So you can see the sort of thing that we're requesting or that we're hoping for um, based on the themes of the uh, subjects, based on, on, on the topic. If we just also re refer back to this um, element of Photoshop, uh, we have one image here that was kind of on theme, but um, it it really just looked, th this was for um, adventure, and one could perceive this as adventure, that's absolutely fine, but the post-production work, uh, I'm afraid, on this one was a little bit overcooked, a little bit overkill, so it started to deviate away from photography and became more like artwork and painting again. So there's this, there's this thin line, if you like, this threshold where we have to decide you know, we're running a photography competition, and whilst we allow post-production, we don't want the entries to end up being a post-production entry, and that's something that doesn't look like a photograph anymore. And I think that is important to point out as well. Um, I guess one of the easiest ways to ascertain your chances of winning a competition, or how you should um, relate to the competition or how you should interpret the competition is to actually go back and look at previous winners. So in our competi competition section we have past competition winners listed and you can clearly see from that the caliber of the work and the style and how on theme it is and the quality of the type of images that we expect to win. So those are some of the key components. Being on topic, quality of the image itself, Watermarks and logos, a big no-no. Uh, strong narrative, good quality, good exposure, good composition, uh, obviously fitting the theme at the same time. Make sure that the post-production work is um, not overpowering. Post-production should be sort of indiscernible in many ways. And, um, you know, concentrate on the details of the image, you know, the key things, the absolute basics, like is it in focus? Is there camera blur? Is there motion blur? Is, is the composition pleasing? Is the lighting good? Are these elements going to work well, given, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the sort of standards that we're expecting to judge? Now, um, hopefully that gave you a bit of an insight into uh, how we judge competitions and how we think you should uh, potentially uh, perceive uh, competition entries going forwards. Now, as I said, um, it's not long till the closing date of December the 10th for our competition red. And in that competition, we have a Canon 5D Mark IV up for grabs. So those of you that are able to enter, um, we hope uh, and look forward to receiving some great entries. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.